we shall discuss compiler design now the main aim of compiler is to convert a high level language into a low level language then uh, uh, the question is if we have to convert the high level language into low level language why don't we write a program in a low level language the reason is uh, we are not comfortable writing programs in zeros and ones the binary language we are comfortable writing it in english english language or some language similar to english and then compiler is a software which is going to convert that uh, high level language to low level language along with the compiler we have many other uh, software modules which will help us here so if you look at this uh, this diagram i'll tell you what are all the phases available see first the high level language will be given to preprocessor then the preprocessor is going to convert that high level language into pure high level language for example what is a high level language and pure high level language is if you write a c program the starting lines are going to contain hash include isn't it or it is going to contain hash define right so if a program contains such lines then it is called high level language and preprocessor is going to remove these lines remove these lines removing hash include by including the file that is also called as file inclusion file inclusion file inclusion means whatever file you want to include uh, the preprocessor is going to substitute that entire file in your source program okay and the second one is hash define for example sometimes you might have to define a constant and uh, you don't want to write its name let me tell you an example uh, in some programs we might need uh, the value interest interest you know provided by the bank and the interest is variable right it is a constant but then it is a variable therefore if anywhere the interest has to be changed you cannot go to the program and then you know auto mechanically manually change all the places where the interest is instead of doing that you can just change in the define line hash define something okay so if you have hash define and hash includes you know you can have hash define some constant if you change the value of hash define constant it is automatically going to be reflected so it is called macro expansion sometimes we are going to write macros also macros are nothing but small functions for which we don't want to really call a function function calling is a overhead macro calling is simple that is why we go for macro expansion so preprocessor is generally going to do these things file ex file inclusion and macro expansion now after the preprocessor phase we are going to enter uh, the compiler phase and the input to compiler is pure high level language which means the program will not contain any hash lines any hash tags and these hash tags are also called as preprocessor directives they direct the preprocessor about what to do okay so the next phase is assembly uh, sorry compiler compiler will take the pure high level language and it will convert into assembly language for every platform by platform i mean the hardware that you are using for example intel or amd or uh, motorola this is the hardware you are using on top of it the operating system for example linux windows 64 bit 32 bit so depending on your hardware and the operating system which is also called as platform we are going to have some assemblers a assembler for one platform will not work for other platform for example you can think of assembler as uh, Hmm. as a manual a manual uh, which is you know which using which you can only operate one instrument you cannot operate other instrument therefore uh, the main purpose of compiler is to generate assembly level language and assembly level language will be not a not entirely in zeros and ones and not entirely high level language so it is somewhat intermediate uh, previously long back people used to write the programs in assembly language too and later they came to high level language okay pre you know before compiler they always used to have assembler and once the assembler take this assembly language it is going to contain convert the assembly language into machine code so machine code is you know what it is zeros and ones but then there are two types of machine codes one is relocatable machine code and other is absolute machine code relocatable machine code means you can load that machine code at any point in the computer and you can run in the sense in the sense uh, compiler assumes that it doesn't assume anything compiler doesn't assume that you are going to run a you know run a program only from particular memory if you have the memory ram in that ram in that ram compiler assumes that you can either start from this point or this point or this point therefore all the addresses within the program will be in such a way that they will cooperate for the program movement while running the program you can move it 
okay and loader and drink linker will take the machine code which is relocatable and then convert it into absolute code okay so let's let's see what you know if you if you if you talk about any compiler like gcc or turbo turbo c, c compiler all these phases are included okay so but then actually compiler means only the part which converts pure high level language to assembly language but if you look at gcc you need not do preprocessing separately assembly separately loading linking separately everything will be you know kept in a one tool now in this course compiler design we are not interested in looking at all the tools together we are only going to look at what a compiler is going to do so let's see what are all the phases available in compiler so first one is lexical analysis phase uh, lexical analysis phase will take the program and read it and then convert the program into tokens that is also called as stream of tokens and next these stream of tokens will be given to syntax analyzer syntax analyzer is also called as parser sometimes and syntax analyzer is going to take the tokens and convert it into a parse tree and now parse tree will be given to semantic analysis and now semantic analyzer is going to again verify whether the parse tree is meaningful or not that is called parse tree which is semantically verified and now this parse tree will be given to intermediate code generator intermediate code generator is going to generate three address code there are various three address codes we have and here i know uh, there are various intermediate codes we have and uh, three address code is very very popular and now the output of this intermediate code generator will be given to code optimizer the main purpose of code optimizer is to reduce the size of the program or is to reduce the number of lines and then it will be given to target code generator and target code generator is finally going to generate the assembly code and during all the phases all of the phases or the entire software modules are going to take support from something called as symbol table manager so we shall see all of them in detail by taking an example you will understand more when i take an example and moreover all of them are going to talk with a module called error handler okay so we shall take an example and see what do i mean by stream of tokens and what do i mean by parse tree what do i mean by semantic verification three address code optimization target code generator i'll take a single example and i'll explain you all the phases in that example okay fine got it yeah let's see an example about uh, how all the phases are working the example is x equal to a plus b into c let us say that is the source program we have given just for the assumption the source program is just one line x equal to a plus b into c nothing but you know you have to multiply b and c and then add a and then store the result in x first this one will be given to lexical analyzer once the lexical analyzer receives the input the input is converted into a stream of tokens that is the main purpose of lexical analyzer right so other responsibilities of lexical analyzer is they are going to remove the white spaces if there are any white spaces opposite you know after this before it and if there are any comments if you know you might you might even write you know a comment something like this whatever comment it is this one will be deleted by lexical analyzer so main responsibility is converting the program the stream of uh, lexemes lexemes means all these names into stream of tokens right for example id is i know x is identifier equal to is a operator a is an identifier plus c is an operator b is an identifier c is an identifier right so how do you identify how does the lexical analyzer identify that uh, you know these are all uh, identifiers and then these are all uh, tokens is uh, you know that is using some reg regular expression called patterns so for example uh, an identifier can be like this an identifier can be a letter followed by letter or digits any number of them a letter followed by letter or digits this is called the pattern if anything matches this pattern then that will be automatically identified as an identifier so the pattern will be known to the lexical analyzer before which means you have to give it before you start everything now once you get the tokens stream of tokens stream of tokens will be given to syntax analyzer now syntax analyzer is going to take all the tokens one by one and then it is also going to take a grammar you know it is generally called context free grammar why are grammars you know useful is 
its main grammar's main use is this um what the entire program the rules of the programming language can be entirely represented in uh, some few productions generally every program you know every programming language it will have some few hundreds of productions using these hundreds of productions production means these rules using these rules we can represent what a uh, program actually is for example the meaning of this these few productions is this a statement can be identifier is equal to expression followed by semicolon okay and now an expression can be expression plus term or term a term can be term into factor or factor a factor can be simply a, an identifier right so using this pro these rules your program has to be matched against them which means the input has to be checked whether we have given it according to this format which we wanted for this for this the syntax analyzer it is also called as parser it is going to construct a parse tree parse tree is going to start with the start symbol yes yes is the start symbol a statement is identifier is equal to expression an expression is expression plus term a term is term into factor factor can be identifier term can be factor factor can be identifier so finally what we get is a parse tree in which you no know, we can see the entire stream of tokens in case if you don't see the stream of tokens see the stream of tokens is this id equal to id plus id into star followed by semicolon right therefore you have to see that the yield of this parse tree and the input to the syntax analyzer both are same if you get that we can say that the input is according to the format we gave otherwise there is a syntax error therefore syntax errors can be detected at syntax analyzer if the input is not according to the grammar given okay now the output of syntax analyzer is a parse tree this parse tree will be given to semantic analyzer the next phase right so semantic analyzer is going to take the parse tree and verify it semantically semantically in the sense whether it is meaningful or not for example it is you no know, identifier is equal to something right now with left hand side has to be a variable it cannot be a constant or it cannot be a function name or it cannot be an array name so left hand side has to be a variable which is compatible with the type of the right hand side so all such type checkings are have to be done at semantic analyzer okay so output of semantic analyzer is going to be meaningfully verified parse tree that is why it is called syntax uh, semantically verified parse tree now this semantically verified parse tree will be given to intermediate code generator so intermediate code generator is going to generate intermediate code the uh, there are various kinds of intermediate codes but the most popular one in intermediate code is uh, three address code why is it called three address code is if you look at any line there are only three addresses for example in this one t1 bc t2 a t1 x t2 which means maximum there can be three addresses I mean you know it can even be less so the given statement is four addresses now we reduce the statement into three addresses this is three address code why do you want to convert something into intermediate code generator is if you can convert a program into intermediate code then that intermediate code can be converted to machine language using the last two phases which are dependent on the platform so till this part whatever machine you are going to run the compiler on this part is completely same which means if you want to design a new compiler for a new platform you need not start it from the scratch you can take all the phases till intermediate code generator and you can change the last two phases so that the new compiler can be formed okay therefore if you are having an existing compiler what you could do is just take it and then change the last two phases so that you get a new compiler for a new platform for example if your existing compiler is uh, writing some code uh, which will run on a computer maybe if you want to do a code or run a write a code which will run on a mobile phone just you change the last two phases these two phases you need not change everything okay and then by taking this intermediate code the code optimizer is going to reduce the number of lines how many lines were there three lines were there if you look at the lines first what is what are they doing is first they are trying to multiply b and c first they are trying to multiply b and c and then put it in t1 and then add 
a to t1 and then put it in t2 and then write t2 into x. Now by using code optimizer we are actually reducing the number of lines. We don't need actually three lines to do this job. Only two lines could do it. Okay. So that is why we are having code optimizer. Now the output of code optimizer will be given to target code generator. The main, main purpose of target code generator is to write the code which assembler can understand. You remember that right? After the compiler there is a phase called assembler and the assembler will be depending on the platform. Therefore depending on what assembler you use you have to write the you know this uh, target code generator has to produce that kind of code. For example now this is just an example I have taken it need not be the same for all the compilers. So output could look something like this something I am mean, not saying that it is going to be always like this. No, we have how many variables a b c in case if we have moved a into r or not b into r1 c into r2 then this code can be put in this way first we are multiplying b and c that is why multiply r1 and r2 and then storing it in r2 only therefore r2 will contain b into c and then we are adding r0 to r2 right why because t2 is nothing but adding r0 to r2 and then we are moving everything into x right so this is this is actually x x equal to a plus t1 and then we are moving everything into x right so theoretically this is what all the phases are supposed to do but then practically when you come to the practical implementation of compilers we really don't have all these phases most of the phases or most of the jobs or the functions are done by uh, syntax analyzer itself which means the syntax analyzer is the generally the heart of the compiler uh, which is even going to take lexical and I mean when you implement it we are not going to implement it separately in the same module you are going to implement even the lexical analyzer and the semantic analyzer also and even the intermediate code generator therefore this entire part will be implemented together which is also called as front end so till the phase intermediate, intermediate code generator it is also called as front end. Front end in the sense uh, the starting part of the compiler and after that whatever is remaining that is called back end. Okay? So back end we have code optimizer and target code generator. So in all these phases there is front end and there is back end. Theoretically the entire front end is implemented together and then the back end. If you give any program normally. Uh, so front end will act on it first and then the back end if you are interested in implementing a compiler there are various tools available so first thing is for lexical analyzer there is a tool called lex available in unix so you can uh, you can implement you know lexical analyzer using lex and for syntax analyzer there is a tool called uh, yacc at another compiler compiler and if you want to do any project on this uh, compiler there is a tool called lans lanc lans so lans is nothing but implementation of the front end of the compiler which will give you intermediate code and then you can implement back end on your own depending on the platform okay so what i mean to say is theoretically there are all the phases but practically we have front end and back end all the phases you know till this intermediate code generator are implemented together and mainly they are implemented in uh, syntax analyzer okay okay